Hello everybody, Big Fat Plus, and welcome back to the Big Man Plays! Planescape Torment requested by Bormac. When we last left off, we managed to get all the uh, teachers back into their uh, jobs. One, uh, two, by convincing them that they were good for the job. And one, just by talking to them. I guess I'm sure he's just, you know. Also, we have Mertwin the Headless is walking around, walking and everything, trying to find his head. Even though he shouldn't be walking around, but, you know, game's, yeah, this game has tons of logic issues. But yes, now we're going to mess with the sensations. Now, can you help me? Sensoriums. Let's start with the public sensoriums. Because we have senses to check. Gotta find the guide. All right. Since a guide, could you please activate these for us, sir? And name us some white to run all the way around. This man's gentle voice complements his calm and refined demeanor. Greetings! Are you here to use one of the sensory stones? Uh, yes, I am. There are currently more than a dozen standard sensations available, as well as six more extravagant experiences. The use of a standard stone is ten copper commons. The more evolved ones will cost one fifty commons. Fifty coppers. Without a care of the standard, the extravagant. The uh, standard. The man smiles and explains you some of the various sensations that you are currently available to. Which one of these suit you? Uh, which one of these suit you? Um... Let's see, we have unavoidable pain. Good, the stone sh just good. The stone you shall want to use in, in one of the smaller chambers. One room clockwise from the stairwell. It is greenish yellow in color. Um You know, it wouldn't kill you to say a few words to me, Fiendling. Or hug me. Or kiss me. Okay. The screen yellow stone is the most is the one to correct direct you toward within life experience of oh, pain. Begin the cessation! The experience is short and a violent one. Struggling with another slightly stronger man on the edge of a blazing hot stream of a molten lava, your weapon hand is slowly inex inexorably forced ever closer to the magma. Pizzas would evaporate the instant they appear. The hair on the back of your hand blackens and smoldens above the awesome heat. Finally, your, you, your howls of suffering echoing from the candy walls around you. Your hand in the axe it holds plunges into lava and tries to vash in a few agonizing seconds. Lovely. So, an infinite experience. So, the experience seems to have stirred some long forgotten, vague, similar memory in your own mind. Feels as if you've just gained something from using the sensory. Sensory. <laughs> sensory stone! Na na na! <sighs> Here, could you hold on to this, please? Thank you. Just in case. Yes, we want to do all these because each one get nets us some experience. Nuts sensation. Standard. Tender love. Wait, what? Uh... When I was used in the smaller chambers, two rooms clockwise. Light blue in color. Okay, two rooms All clockwise. Right. You know what, here. I'm gone. You guys are going to be in the way here. This is for... This is for, uh... TMO, specifically. Light blue... Yeah. Light blue uh, is the one the clerk direct you towards. The experience tendered up. Sensation. Your eyes are closed. You can sense yourself standing on the tips of your toes, press against someone tightly. Soft, soft lips press against yours, giving you the most gentle of kisses. Your heart seems to flutter in your chest. You feel as if you could fall backwards and simply float off into space. Okay. Uh, another 750. Eh? Serve some long forgotten vaguely some memory of your own if you gain some... Yes. I have a feeling all these memories are probably going to be his. Which would be funny. Another sensation. Standard. My numbing tedium will do. I think it's gonna be like this. We 
The experience couldn't be more than a few minutes long, but hours seemed to pass. A long, boring lecture in the driest, dustiest hall in the University of Chalm and Sigil. You look about the vast hall, hoping to catch someone's eye to pull, a f to pull a face at, but the other students are either asleep or staring listlessly into space. You drop your quill pin, pick it up, and drop again, just for something to do. So you're stabbing yourself in the eye with it, just to see if your senses haven't been wholly numbed by the incredible boredom. <laughs> God, these things are going to be funny, I can tell. Another uh, sensation, please. Let's see. Standard. Sheer wonder sounds lovely. Sheer wonder. Wait, is that... Green is yellow. Okay, good. What is it going to be getting late? Hesitantly, you open your mouth and take a shallow breath. The water flows into your lungs like cool air. You smile and take a deep breath, gawking in all directions as you slowly sink to the bottom of the harbor, where hundreds of colorful fish weave through twisting tracks of brilliant coral. As your feet touch bottom, you peer up at the keel of your ship and laugh aloud with joy, a string of great bubbles shooting up towards the surface. That sounds more like the feeling of dying and drowning than the feeling of, 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 of sheer wonder. I'm not a swimmer. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, consuming impatience. Fire. Five. Okay, reddish orange. Reddish orange, so it's the one that clerk directs you to. Okay, begin. You stand debating with. Amnes, the horribly slow keeper of the line key, as to whether or not your quest is important enough for him to relinquish the artifact into your care. The whole experience is an exercise in sheer torment. Each and every one of his words is followed by a significant pause. Each and every point he makes is reiterated time and again before he lets you speak. You present an argument, then wait, and wait, and wait, while he makes his counterpoint, to which you shoot out a snappy counterpoint of your own. Then must wait yet again for another of Vaughn's drawing, meandering, seemingly endless counterpoints. It's everything you can do not to simply lock the fiend's tusked head off and snatch a key from the twisting corpse. It's like the teacher that Picard had in Star Trek. He drones on in one long, boring, unemotional voice moving from topic to topic so that no one has a chance to interrupt. It's really quite hypnotic. <laughs> Another sensation. Let's see. The standard. Let's see. Six. Sounds. Tired surrender. Violet in color. Let's see. Not this one, but this one. Okay. Shuddering, chattering, ho hoping beyond hope to be found, you curl into yourself beneath a blanket of snow to save what little warmth you have left. Trying to keep your eyes open to remain awake, you become aware that you can no longer feel your arms, your legs, the ice against your face, and tired, so tired, you at last resign to the inevitable. You close your eyes, bidding sleep a bitter welcome as the sense of loss forces a single tear, doomed to crystallize before it even reaches your cheek from your aching eyes. Well, that's kind of sad. That's definitely not a feeling I would like to have. In fact, that's a feeling I would like to avoid. Okay. Standard again. Supernatural lust. <laughs> Light blue. Done. Supernatural lust. Oh, this will be a good one. <laughs> you find yourself coupling with, with a succubus, a... Oh my... A creature of such intense otherworldly beauty that even her fiend's horns and thrashing tail give you no pause. Actually, it probably adds to the allure. She gasps under you. You desire her so completely that the whole of your existence seems focused towards this single goal. 
As your life explodes from you in a starry burst, you hear the delighted laughter of the succubus as he drains you dry, leaving your body but a soulless husk. Seems like a decent way to die, if you, don't, if you ask me. I mean, personally, it's like, you know, it's like, hey, you died banging! Yes! Of course, some would probably say that's pretty stupid of me. Oh, okay, we still got two. Tell me of some of the others. Let's see, eight. Oh, good lord, there's more. Psychosis, festering jealousy, bitter loathing, pure glee. Let's see, psychosis! So we should want to use one of the small chambers. Clock is... Okay. Stone you should want to use is in one of the small chambers. One room clockwise from the stairwell. Greenish yellow, okay? Okay, now we're going to do psychosis. Oh, goody. Experience is strange, but very disturbing. You're the, you, you've the point of a knife pressed against someone's throat. Your hand clamped over their mouth and breathes hot and heavy in their face. You begin to stab them, slowly. The knife dimples their skin and eventually breaks it. There is a hot rush of blood over your forearm, the sound of strangled respiration, a horrible sense of averted glee, and it is over. I would imagine that nameless one here is, um... Lived quite a few lives worth of this insanity. Tell me what they can eight. Festering jealousy! That sounds good. Light blue. Okay, yep, just gonna be using the same ones here. Okay, begin. You feel your lip curl as the fair haired. Yeah, as the fair-haired young hero, armor gleaming like a polished silver mirror, once again enters your tavern. Hanging his velvet cloak on a wall peg, he surveys your patrons with a pair of eyes like sea gems and a smile that sets the serving wenches swooning. You set the mug you're cleaning down and harumph loudly, thinking of what it'd be like to turn him upside down and shove him in a ring barrel. <laughs> That's why I like to do some RPG heroes, you know, when, when you're allowed to walk in the house and rob it blind. It's like the, 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 like the NBC probably sitting there going, that motherfucker just stole my life savings, my last pair of pants, my, so my sword my daddy gave me, and my grandmama's necklace. Why the fuck can I do something to this son of a bitch? Trust you destroyed these beers, would you? Uh, like another session. Standard. Uh, click for more. Eight. Festering. Bitter loathing! I know that one. Lots of sensations and... Venomous tears of pain brimming in your narrow yellow eyes. You gather the tattered remains of your small, scaled red wings off the floor. You humbly back out of Groba's study, gritting your needle-like teeth beneath sealed lips. Sure, you're only a sp spinagon, at least among devils. But that's no cause for a pit fiend to tear your wings off because he doesn't like the message you brought him. What will your Glugan master do now? He certainly can't say anything to Groba. And what use is a spigot on without its wings? You'll probably get cast in the pit of flame for incompetence. Vengeance out of the vengeance out of the question. There's little to do but shake your claw fist and hate, hate, hate! Groba, with all the loathing your hard little back the black devil's heart can muster. Now, um, nameless one? TNO? I like to know. How the hell's that come out? The rem Ooh, that reminds me of something. It what? Pure glee! Greenish yellow. Pure glee! That sounds lovely. I would like to experience pure glee. Um. Could you? Move, please. Thank you. Dancing and leaping about in rhythm with the wood elves 
bouncing festival music, you and a dozen other dancers spin through the forest clearing like a whirling dervish, smiling and laughing like mad. As the cheering forest dwellers whoop, clap, and dance alongside you, fairies careen through the air above your heads, leaving sparkling trails of colored light. Okay, that's... don't think I've ever experienced that. At least not. I can remember. And I would remember if I could. If I did. Okay, Frightened Exhilaration. Reddish orange. And then we'll do the expensive ones. Afterwards. You twist your head to look up at the large contraption strapped to your back. A set of four bat-like wings stent from out of it, each made of leather pulled taut over wicker frames. From the precipice you perch on, Gilgar's floating fortress appears as but a tiny speck suspended in the blue-gray sky, miles away from nothing but empty air. This is how everyone travels on the plane of air, I said. It's easy! You smirk, step back a ways, and make a running leap off the cliff into the cool wind below, leaving your stomach behind. As the wings suddenly catch her, an amazing rush shudders through your entire body as you soar out over the nothingness and towards the elemental prince's abode. I was expecting it to come up at the angle until your wings break. <laughs> like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I was expecting it, but your wings broke. Son of a bitch. <sighs> okay, another feeling. Standard. Uh, eight. Uh, oh, that's frightened exhilaration. Eight. Six. Grim determination. Violent color. The entire hall was in ruins and still in the process of being destroyed as dozens of combatants hurled weapons, deadly arcane magics, and themselves at one another in a desperate struggle to be the last one standing. Plumes of vast, acrid green smoke rose from the pile of limp bodies you dragged yourself out of, having barely escaped the wrath of some fiendish spell. There it was, across the way, through the battling throng, through the bloodthirsty battle ahead of you, sitting untouched on a miraculously upright table, your pint of meat. And you'd get it back if you had to kill every last one of the brawling tavern patrons to do it. Bar brawls in fantasy settings always end poorly. I'm just gonna say that right now. <laughs> it's like, God damn it, I'm gonna kill everybody to get my damn beer! That sounds like, yeah. Ended. More grim determination. I will get my beer! <laughs> Complete bafflement. Oh, goody. Light blue. Oh, this will be good. All right. Get your butt up here, TNO. I'm going to start calling you TNO if I remember. Oh, okay, TNO! Could you please? Thank you. You awake from... Uneasy dreams to find yourself transformed in your dank lair into you find yeah to you find yourself transformed in your dank lair into a rather small four-limbed fleshy thing. You're lying on your you're, you're lying on your shellless, as it were, wholly unprotected back. When you lift your tiny head, unadorned with its usual sensory antennae, a little you can see. Your pinkish belly, partly covered in soft curling hair, is quite unlike the black bristles you've accustomed to seeing there. Your two, only two legs now, jut from the end of your torso rather than up from around your abdomen. They look thick and ungainly in proportion to your body, and lie there limply, making no attempt to right you on your own. Only by actively concentrating can you move these things. What has happened to you? Sounds like a turtle got turned into a human. TNO? Something you need to tell me about, man? Uh, 
set up watch. Okay, those will get taken back. And now let's do the extravagant ones. Horrible regret, shock, and a rise of, of see, to, uh, and a rise to seething vengefulness. Slowly dawning horror, indescribable frustration. A vastly important secret, lycanthropy. Actually, stand it was. Okay, horrible regret sounds good. Okay, stone you shall want to use is one of the larger chambers, three rooms counterclockwise from the stairwells. Reddish orange in color. Okay. You stand on the deck of your flagship, the Divine Hammer, as it floats over the continent of Agerheim, held aloft by the winds of magic. The very landscape rolls in shudders beneath the bombardment of your fleet. One thousand ships, cannons, and bombs hurling their sorcerous fire down like vengeful gods. The shock waves begin to hit your ship only minutes ago. A constant vibration that sends shudders through the whole of the ancient craft in moves your very bones, accompanied by a constant rumbling bass. As the land's mountains begin to sink and the seas that surround it begin to boil off into an atmosphere, your first officer comes to stand beside you. Okay? My Lord Admiral, position to... Uh, position. Permission to speak freely, sir. You nod your acquiescence. Your stomach sinking, you should guess, is the question. My Lord, forgive me, but how? What gives us the right? A billion lives. Keep going. You speak without turning, Tim, unable to take your eyes off Rumos, the nation's vast capital city, as it vaporizes into a cloud of superheated gases twelve miles and growing ever wider. Holy shit. If you only knew the full treachery of the Acherites. First off is the film, one which is beyond most any man's comprehension. Then you would know. You would speak of our right to annihilate them. We've no right to let them live. But, sir, traitors, all of them? Surely among the hundreds of thousands, how many isn't? Silence! Speak of it no more. King has spoken. His will be done. The task set to us is a horrible one, not fit for contemplation or questioning. There is no room for pity, no room for remorse, only duty. Oh. The two of you stand silently for a time, watching the last minutes of Agerheim. At long last you sigh, a low stuttering exhilaration that uh, exhalation it sounds as if something is broken inside you. Beneath the brazen plate that covers the ruined half of your face, your dead eye begins to weep. Follow my friend, I would have you understand. I know now, as I look down at what I have wrought here, that were I to think upon what I have done, what I have truly done, I would be struck mad. A deed such as this, the anguish would overwhelm, destroy me. So first half, Officer Falm, must be that there are no innocents in Agai. No mothers, no children, no people. Only traitors. Vile, cunning traitors, who deserve no less than the full brunt of our most holy king's wrath. Do you understand this? Uh, yes, my lord. Good. Now go. I wish to be alone here. By your command, Lord Admiral. Falm bows his head and returns below deck, leaving you stand over the end of a civilization. Ooh, 1500. I would like to know how the hell you remembering that shite, TNO. <sighs> okay. Now, session. Extravagant. Shock and a rise of seething vengefulness. Is, uh, I want large chain. Two rooms counterclockwise. Some stairwell violent cobbler. One, two. Done. Let us go in here. You stand somewhere in the nether regions of the plains, a sweltering place where the ground is beaten copper and the sky is of brass. Here the bodies of sinners, petitioners in this horrid place are rolled amongst the iron brambles and bronze scorpions until their bones are fine gray dust. You squint at the horizon, the bone dust rising with putrid-smelling gusts of wind that carry with them the sound of agonized moaning. 
There's nothing but flat metallic landscape as far as the eye can see. The dust is everywhere, in everything. It stirs at your eyes, coats the insides of your mouth with a pastry film. Pastry, pastry film, pastry film. Haha, <laughs> there you go, that, that's lovely. You spit, wiping at it with your finger. But it's of no use. The stuff tastes as fouled your mouth completely. You look down at the key in your hand. A minute platinum orb. And a picture of the man's face who solemnly swore to you the magical portal you just passed through. Now gone, of course. Led to the green fields of Batopia. Someone, by all the powers in their proxies, was going to pay for this one. It's like, yeah, this is good, go to a good place. Hey guys, later we do, he comes back and the look on his face like finds I sent him to a horrible plane of death and destruction. Oh, there he is. Oh, shit! Extravagant. That would be a shock. It's like, hey, he's like eating! Is that my dad? Dead motherfucker. S slowly dawning horror. Oh. So each one is one launch tables, one room counterclockwise from the stairwell, violet blue. All right. Violet blue. I'm going to try and keep all of these in one episode here. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a good 10 grand, 500 experience for about, um, or for the small ones. And about, uh, it's, it's going to be nine, 9 grand for 300. But so I'm just doing them all again, all the experience, you know. How could it be, you think, regarding the burgundy liquid carefully? Across the table from you, the twisted old man smiles slyly. Please, sir, try, he whispers. Such voice sounds of dry leaves blowing over the roughly cobbled street. Thou shalt find it more than thy, lives up to thy expectations, I am sure. You nod at him and lift the crystal goblet into the air, watching the light play through the crimson liquor. You'd come a long way for this drink, searching long and hard for this old man. And you'll be damned to let anything rush you now. The moment was to be savored. You raise the glass to your lips, inhaling the stuff's aroma. The bouquet is light, sweet, intoxicating, almost dizzying so. Dizzily, dizzyingly so. Blah, 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 blah. You've tried countless drinks, written tomes about them. Their flavors and smells, means of manufacture, and your journeys across the plains. But this, this stuff was supposed to be legendary. No living man you'd found or heard of had tried the stuff. The stories are ridiculous. Nothing could taste quite so good. But if there were the slightest bit of truth in them, it would be some fine liquor indeed. At last you drink the goblet, a cautious sip. Oh boy. Incredible, indescribable. As the flavor washes over your palate, you fight the urge to shudder with delight. Nothing, nothing! You could have tried, and all your long years taste quite like this. You look up at the old man, startled to find your glass empty. You had drained it all in a single draught. You wipe your eyes with the, with the back of your hand, not entirely sure when you had begun to cry. Experience, tears of joy, eh? The old man laughs softly. Quite pleasing to the tongue, is it not? Would thou like some more, perchance? He smiles at you once more. Y yes, yes, if I might. Surely, he replies, refilling your glass. Try, try as you might, you cannot resist downing it in a single gulp. You thrust your finger into the goblet and attempt to find some last hidden drop of the stuff. Several times more does he fill the goblet, and each time you gulp the stuff down as a starving man would devour a feast, unable to control yourself to deny yourself another exquisite taste of it. Oh, that's not going to end well. He chuckles softly once more. I drink such as this. A man would do anything for it, no? You nod without hesitation. Yes, a man would. Looking at him, his sly smile suddenly takes on a whole new meaning. A sense of horror begins to creep over you, even as you begin to yearn painfully for more of the blood-red liquor. Yes, yes, the old man grins, his yellow eyes gleaming. A man would do anything in the thrall of such a drink. Even the most terrible, the most heinous of deeds, as thou shalt see, my newest servant. Oh! <sighs> Ooh, that's, um... That's lovely. Get over there. Let's see, another one. Extravagant. 
indes shut up watch indescribable frustration All right, Shambles three moves counterclockwise stairwell reddish orange. Okay, come on. Yeah, I'm go over there so I can click this. Thank you. You can see it now. The crown of Hapon gleaming upon a marble pedestal. No more than 20 strides away it is. With it, you could wrest control of the armies of... Athenopolis, away from your treacherous brother. I stole your father's kingdom. A fool your wretched brother was. He smiled grimly at the thought. To leave... Grimly at the thought. To leave the king's only daughter alive, thinking she would do him no harm. A sound. The creak of leather sandals. The softest hiss. Over there, by that third pillar. She was close now. Pelopi the Medusa. Jealously guarding the crown. Her servants had stolen from for her so long ago. Crouching behind the white pillar, you wrap your hand tightly around your trusted, thrice-blessed javelin. With your helm of swiftness and a hundred mirrored shield, even a beast such as Pelopi would be no match for you. Any moment now, she would round the pillar and meet the slight sight of you. Even if, she, even if she turned away from the shield, your javelin would surely find your throat. Suddenly, there is a gentle touch on your shoulder. You gasp, spinning around to face, of course, the Medusa. Accepting the inevitable, you only have time to loose a piercing cry of frustration before your lungs, and every other part of you solidifies into a cold gray stone. Dumbass. She knew your ass was there. And he's like, okay, she's right there, you could have just closed your eyes and spun, but no, you didn't. Because you was a dumbass. Extravagant. So that's definitely indescribable frustration. Vastly important secret. Okay. Two rooms kind of clockwise. Violet. I think teams are wondering, hey, is, is, uh, hey, is uh, Chief there uh, addicted? No. He only has so much money. Six Imperial servants rush ahead of you, swinging the golden doors of the Dragon Palace wide. Long live the Empress, they cry in unison. One thousand years! Long live the Empress! One thousand years! Beyond the threshold, dozens of loyal warlords, kings, in their own right, drop to their knees, touching their heads to the f floor in deference as you pass the men route to the Grand Imperial Throne. As you turn to face your minions, seeing yourself upon the Imperial Throne, you allow a small, satisfied smile to creep across your carefully painted lips. There is but one thought in the forefront of your mind. That the body of the young Empress, Wu Sun Sha, lies broken at the bottom of the well of solitude, and that you, Bai Hua, a horse merchant's daughter, are at last poised to shake the Empire and, corrupt, and the corrupt Wu Dynasty to its very foundation. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! This is from frickin' Three Kingdom shit! I'm sure my buddy is gonna be like, ooh! Good job. Get over there, please. I think we got, like, one more. Extravagant. Lycanthropy well, sounds fun. One room, counterclockwise, stairwell, violet, blue. Done. Suddenly aware that the hour has almost come, you leap from your bed and run flying from your cottage into the surrounding woods. Stumbling in the dark, you come to a small moonlit clearing. The one you had found last week and decided to use tonight. You hastily strip off your clothes, sit in the long grass, and wait. You close your eyes, listening to the steady chirp of crickets, the throaty croaking of bullfrogs in the nearby creek, the rustle of the grass as the wind caresses it. What would someone think seeing this th uh, through your eyes, experiencing this moment, and what was next to come? Soon you would travel to the city, find a cleric to rid you of the curse, but for now, may as well make the best of things. 
You rub your hands together with anticipation, grinning like a bearded, fire-haired giant of a madman, sitting naked and alone in a forest clearing in the dead of night. Practice sensation runs across your skin, and your senses sharpen dramatically. You breathe in your through your nose, inhaling the scent of everything around you. The damp earth, the sweat on your cast-off clothes, the opossum clinging fearfully to the tree behind you. You open your eyes and look down at your forearms. The faint moonlight reveals the slightest quivering across the surface. surface. There, surface. Yeah. But in moments, the flesh begins to ripple impossibly. Tufts of thick brown fur sprouting forth. With a grisly crackling sound like popping joints and grinding bones, your back and shoulders begin to hunch and broaden. Uncomfortable, but not quite painful. Your muscles, your entire body mass, doubles, triples in size, and continues to grow. Still fascinated by a transformation by a transformation yourself, you watch as your fingers wither away to nothingness, hands swelling into the meaty paws from which burst fur and massive black claws. The night seems to become brighter as your eyes transform, become accustomed to the darkness. A white muzzle comes into view, and you touch your wet, snuffling nose delicately, chuckle at yourself. Next time you think, you'll have to stare into a mirror or pond as the curse takes effect. Watch your face warp and change, losing its familiar shape to become a bear's. Soon it becomes difficult to co concentrate upon anything but your more basic urges. Food would be good right now. Yes, food. Perhaps you'll get lucky and find a nice, fat catfish in the creek. You rise off your massive haunches with a huff and begin to amble through the trees and no forest, heading for the water's edge. I think that's everything here. Let's see here. Uh, I think, yeah, that's definitely a lot of experience we just did, so that's... So we did them all, so that's 19,500 experience we just gained for just frickin' with the sensory stones. So, let me go ahead and save that, because that's a lot of experience. When we paid about 300, about 400 coppers for it. And, oops, what, what part is this? 63. Yeah, that's a lot of experience. We paid basically about 400 coppers for, which ain't too bad. So, now that we've indulged ourselves in the uh, massive amounts of senses, what are we going to do next in this nice little building? But not next time on the Big Man Plays! Planescape Torment requested by Bormac. Till next episode, Big Five Plus, Cyanar, and... I can understand how someone could get addicted to these, but if the, if the senses remain the same all the time, the scenes remain the same all the time, I'm pretty sure it could get pretty old pretty fast. Except for that one about the uh, love one. Yeah, that wouldn't be nice all day. It'd be like a porno channel, except it's kind of slightly maybe interactive. 